Hi, my name is Martin and today I'm going to show you how to disassemble a PlayStation 5 and prepare it and assemble it with our Quantum X PlayStation water block. Let's begin. Uh, for this task we're going to need our basic tools, I fix it, a knife, scissors, q-tips, paper napkins and uh, isopropanol alcohol for cleaning, the, for cleaning the liquid metal. And that's it, so let's begin. First we have to take off the side panels of the PlayStation. You can do this by lifting this section where the PlayStation logo is upwards and then pull it downwards. That's it, easy as that. And the same goes for the bottom side. You lift the, oh, the other side. <laughs> You lift it up and pull it downwards and it just goes down. Don't force it, it goes down easily. Now we're gonna have to remove these screws around here so we can get to the PCB. First we're gonna have to pull this out. You just pull it out, that's it. Next thing, we're gonna have to remove the warranty void because there's a screw hiding underneath. We're also gonna have to remove the pen and the cover for the additional SSD. To unplug the pen, we're gonna have to lift this cover up and unplug it from the PCB. Okay, I think we removed all the screws. Now we can take off the plastic part. At this stage, we're gonna have to be careful and take a good look at these antennas where the antennas are connected to the PCB because we're gonna have to disconnect that and connect them back later on where we assemble the water block on it. We're also going to have to unplug the LED light and the front power button. We can do this by pulling these blue tabs out of the connectors. Simple as that. For the next step, we're going to have to turn around the PlayStation 5 and unscrew two screws from the back, here and here. We can turn it back around. Before we take the PCB with the stock cooling out of the plastic casing, we're gonna have to unplug one more thing, and that's the front USB port and USB-C port. To do that, we're gonna have to unscrew these five screws, take off the metal cover, and unplug the front I.O. You can unplug the front ports by pressing down on this metal latch and pulling the connector out by this plastic case, like this. Now we can take the whole PCB with stock cooling out of the plastic casing. But we're gonna have to be careful because while we take this out, we're also gonna unplug the PCB from the power supply. The power supply is connected underneath right here. So you're gonna have to pull it a bit more firmly out of the connector. But be careful not to break anything. Just like that. And there we have it, the PCB with stock cooling. Now we're gonna have to remove the stock cooling from PCB. Okay, we've undone all the screws. Now we're gonna remove the metal plate or stock cooling from the PCB. Uh, for this task, you're gonna need some sort of a plunger. Uh, because the metal plates are still held on a bit by thermal pads. Now we're gonna have to remove a few additional screws to remove the front side of the stock connector. Okay, 
Now we can take the PCB off from the front part of the stock tooling. The same as before, the PCB is still held on by a thermal pads, like so. Uh, so you're gonna have to be gentle. In this step, be careful not to touch the liquid metal. So now we're gonna have to clean up the PCB, remove all the thermal pads, remove the liquid metal, and that's how we're gonna prepare the PCB for the assembly with the block. Make sure you clean all of the liquid metal out of the die. Now we can turn the PCB over and clean the pads from the back side. Okay, we successfully cleaned the PCB. Now for the next step, we're gonna take out the antennas from the main housing. First antenna is located on the power supply and the second one is located on this plastic cover, on the front plastic cover. So firstly, we're gonna have to take out the power supply and then the front cover. So the first antenna is located right over here. And the second one is located over here. Later on, if you decide to use this front USB port and USB-C port in your build, you're just gonna have to unscrew these two, three screws, take the PCB out and plug it into the PCB after you install the block. So now let's remove the antennas. Antennas are stuck in place with plastic latches. Here's one, and here's the other one. A few moments later. We successfully disassembled the PlayStation. We took the PCB out, we took the antennas out, and now it's time to assemble water block onto our PlayStation motherboard. The first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna have to disassemble the block which comes pre-assembled. By the way, this is all the tools, thermal pads, uh, thermal prays that we're gonna need to assemble the block onto the PlayStation. The first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna screw on the antennas. The antenna with longer cable, it's usually the blue one, goes on your left side. And the antenna with shorter cable, the black one, goes on the, on the top side. We're gonna use these four screws and washers to attach the antennas. After the antennas are installed, we're gonna continue with putting on the thermal pads on the PCB or on the block, whichever way do you prefer. These are all the thermal pads that need to be put on the front side. Uh, this is the way that we prefer. It's probably the easier for installation for, to put the few thermal pads on the block and few thermal pads on the PCB itself. Now it's time to apply the thermal paste. Now it's time to put the PCB on the front side of the block. Also, make sure that you remove both protective layers from thermal pads. While assembling the PCB onto the front side of the block, make sure that you put these two connectors, two power connectors, into power connectors on the front side of the block. Now it's time to fix the PCB with screws. In the next step, we are screwing in our standoffs with our special tool. We are going to apply thermal pads to the back side of the PCB. The back side of the processing unit is the only place where you are going to need to use 2mm pads. Again, make sure that you remove both sides of protective layers on the thermal pads. Okay, 
Now it's time to put the backside of the block onto the motherboard. But before we do that, we have to take care of a couple more things. First of all, we have to plug in the antennas. Make sure that you plug in wires into the right connectors. The second thing that you need to be careful about is the terminal. While disassembling the block, the terminal might fall out because it's just put in place by these two pins. Uh, also, make sure that the O-rings are in place before assembling the block together. At the end, we advise you to use our screwdriver to tighten the screws to a specific torque. Alright, there you have it, a complete block for PlayStation 5. There's one more thing that we need to talk about, uh, and that is the type of PlayStation that you purchased. We advise you that you purchase the digital version of PlayStation 5 because it doesn't have the disk drive, but if you already have the disk drive version or the non-digital version of PlayStation, we also got you covered on that. We have the cutout on the back side where you can plug in the disk drive because you're gonna need the disk drive every time that the PlayStation updates, so you're gonna have to assemble the disk drive somewhere in your build. But otherwise, this is it. I hope you enjoyed.